Hello, all my chickadees. Welcome back to a Yandere game. <laughs> I only said I was going to take a little break. I didn't say for how long, did I? <laughs> but this one is called Dr. Morgan's Counseling Session. Now, I was going to be playing a different game, and then I realized it was a prequel to this game, and I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm going to play this one first. Even though, um,. I wasn't required to play this game to understand the prequel. I want to. You know, I need the lore. But, <laughs> okay, let me get back to my right position. Do, 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 do. Do. I didn't want to block the title. Okay, you ready? Let's jump in. Next! You're snapped out of your days. Oh, right, counseling. Is this like, well, yeah, it should be just like a counseling counseling, but why are we in counseling? That That's my main question. You step forward to the receptionist, wallet in one hand. A plastic insurance card lies between your index and thumb as you dart your eyes around, avoiding eye contact. Name. What is your name? Sparrow. Sparrow. Um, checking in. You say hesitantly as you slide the card out and slide it across the counter. The receptionist lets out a huff, or is it a sigh, and takes the card. The keyboard clicks loudly as they type your information in. Your hands get your debit card ready for the copay. You rehearse the words you say when the, you a, they ask for payment, the exact movement you'd make, the PIN number you type after, and... Alright, you're checked in. What? You look up as your insurance card is handed back to you. You fumble with your wallet as you put your insurance card back in its slot. You nervously shuffle your feet, waiting for the receptionist to ask for your, uh, for you to pay for your visit, but they'll call you up when they're ready. Is there anything else I can help you with? Despite her words, they're not even turned towards you. Sort it through files instead. Ah, uh, oh, um, it, it's nothing. You duck your head down and turn to find a seat in the waiting area with your debit card still pinched between your fingers. Mm, we were all ready. We had everything in our mind about what was going to happen next. And yet it didn't happen. So maybe that's like disturbed our character a little bit. Because when you're in <laughs> like a frame of mind to be more, you have to know what's going to happen ahead of time. It does kind of throw you for a loop if it happens different than what you're expecting. Why hadn't they asked you to pay like always? A pit began to form in your stomach as you sat down. Fidgeting with your debit card, you ultimately decide to put it away and pocket your wallet. It's entirely possible that your insurance just covered the visit in, it, in its entirety, right? However, despite being a frequent visitor here for over a year, this had never happened. Not once. The time went by as you rested your hands on your knees, taking in the details of the ceiling. After a restless silence, the door to the office opened. Sparrow? The voice is unfamiliar, causing you to hesitate for a moment. That isn't my counselor. You look around nervously, your gaze falling on the receptionist from earlier. They catch your eye and raise an eyebrow before going back to their paperwork. Anxiety starts to gnaw at you as you tighten your grip on your knees. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Can we just leave the office? I know there's four different endings, but can we just leave? <laughs> this is way too much. You decide to leave and reschedule your counseling session. Getting up, you walk through the doors and to the parking lot. You can't shake the feeling of being watched as you unlock your car. Goosebumps rise along the neck, nape of your neck once you lock your car. Did you lock the doors before leaving? Was someone waiting in the back to kill you? Paranoia gets the better of you and you check the back seats. Just in case. Nothing's there. Of course there's nothing there. You locked the doors when you left the car. No one would have gotten in without smashing a window or something. You start the engine and begin to drive out of the parking lot. You pass by the entrance of the office. You spot a man smiling at you in the window. 
A chill runs down your spine. He smiles as he watches you leave. You quickly look away, focusing on driving. Your grip on the driving wheel tightens. You feel sick. The pit in your stomach had only grown. Anxiety and paranoia clung at your insides, wanting to escape. You could feel bile rising in your throat, but you kept it in. It seems your counseling will have to wait for another day. Ending one. Reschedule your appointment. <laughs> we got the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, I think we made the right decision. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to enter this time. Sparrow, you're here. The door opens a little wider. You get up and walk over, entering the office. Yes, I'm, um, I'm here. Oh, hello. You're greeted by a man with blonde hair and li lively brown eyes. Oh, splendid. Right this way. Oh, now that's creepy. I don't like that hallway. I don't like that hallway. Mm -mm. Mm. He leads you down the hallway. It is an uncomfortably long walk with a couple of turns and, some, and down some stairs. You had no idea the office building was so big. You never had a venture this far in before. The man walked with a brisk pace, occasionally looking over his shoulder with a smile to make sure you were keeping up. His pace, as well as the distance you were walking, started to tire you out a bit, so he slowed down and walked next to you. How far are we walking? How are you doing today? The question made you jump a bit. I'm okay? You weren't sure of the answer yourself. He picked up on your tone, nodding. The silence that settled between you two felt awkward. Eventually, you both stop at a door. The, the unfamiliar man took out some keys and thumbed through them, looking for the right key to unlock it. Why is the door locked? If you were already in the office, you shouldn't have to unlock a door. You took this time to look at the door. Strangely enough, it didn't have a nameplate like all the others. It was blank where the name should be, as if the writing had been recently rubbed or cleaned off. Ha, huh, there we go. His voice snaps you out of your observations. He's holding the door open, waiting for you. The room is dark. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No. <laughs> First, lock on the door and a different area than you've normally been to before is big red flags, and now the room is dark. Dude, you need to at least turn on the light to be welcoming. The pit in your stomach grows, anxiety gnawing at you as you step into the room. The light, light withdraws as he closes the door. The air is cold, sending a chill down your spine as you squint to try and make sense of your surroundings. Oh, I forgot to turn the lights on. How silly of me, he says with a feather light laugh. His voice echoes around the room. Suddenly, light floods the room. Uh, are you sure we're not in a basement? Um, this, this don't look right. No. Um, what the... The room was almost entirely empty, save for a plastic table and some metal chairs. Concrete walls and pillars surrounded you, metal pipes running along the ceiling. You were definitely underground somewhere. This was most certainly not your counselor's office. We didn't go down those stairs, so how are we suddenly underground? Before you could say anything, the man walks in front of you fidgeting slightly. He seems a bit embarrassed. A slight blush dusts his cheeks as he shyly avoided eye contact. Sorry, my budget isn't enough to furnish my office, he says sheeplessly, guiding you to the table. Your budget is the least of my worries right now. Wait, um, sorry, um, this isn't my, you say, stepping away from the man. He gives you a puzzled look before smiling again. Oh, I didn't even introduce myself yet. I'm Oliver Morgan, 26 years old. Though, since you're my patient, that would be that would be Dr. Morgan. Morgan is just fine, though, he said, reaching out to shake your hand. 
You pull away, holding your hand close to you. No, that's not what I was going to say. You aren't my usual therapist. I think there was a mistake. I have to go. The smile falls from his face, though his eyes still have a glint to them. You turn your back on him and walk towards the door. You begin to turn the handle, except... What? You jiggle the handle. Again, and again, it doesn't turn. Why isn't it... Is this locked? Did you lock the door? You turn around to look at him. Morgan is uncomfortably close, standing two or three feet away, leaning forward. His face was a few inches away from yours as he boxed you in with one of his arms. A calm smile was still plastered on his face, though it seems like his expression was hard to falter. Sparrow, come on, just take a seat and we can... He reaches for you again. Okay. Are we seven here? Um, stay still. Punch his lights out. Okay, we're going to punch his lights out. <laughs> you push him away before winding your arm back and sucker punching him right in the face. Morgan falls to the floor with a thud. Well, that was easy. Kneeling down, you shove your hands into his pockets, grabbing the keys. Turning back towards the door, you go through the keys and try them one by one. With each passing moment, you can feel your heart rate pick up. Why are there so many damn keys? The one you want is the one with the blue rhinestones. Oh, thanks. Wait, what? You turn around and Morgan is standing up, rubbing the side of his head. Yeah, look, we did leave him a good bruise. <laughs> that hurt. I didn't think he'd punch so hard, he murmurs before smiling at you. You put the keys between your fingers and it's sort of a key knuckle weapon. Yes, yes, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. That's makeshift brass knuckles. Heck yeah. Morgan stares at you, tilting his head. L let me go. Let me leave. You can't stop your voice from shaking. Morgan takes a step forward. You lunge at him, aiming for his stomach. He grabs your arm with ease, yanking you down. The momentum sends you hurling into the door. You groan, trying to straighten yourself up. The grip you had on the keys loosened, the keys sitting loosely in your palm now. Morgan kneels down, taking the keys off your hands and putting them back in his pocket. Oh no, we lost our weapon! Now then, where were we? He says with a smile. You sit up, looking at him fearfully and disoriented. Morgan reaches a hand out for you to take. Left with no other option, you take his hand. He helps you stand back, uh, helps you stand up and steady yourself, his other hand hovering on the small of your back. Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table, seating you in an uncomfortable met metal chair. We could have punched him again and unlocked the door. <sighs> he sits across from you, a small clipboard and a file set on the side on his side of the table. Morgan takes a second to grab something from under his seat and rubs it on his face. When he turns to see you again, the injury you left him with is mostly gone. Oh, did he put makeup on? You nervously stare at him as he organizes the table. Mor Morgan notices your stare and he blushes a little before coughing and grabbing a file. So, anxiety, huh? He said, flipping through the file. Was he seriously going to try and be your counselor? Is this guy even licensed? So, tell me about it. What makes you so anxious? You give him an incredulous look. What is making me anxious is that there's a guy pretending to be my counselor and not letting me leave. Morgan just smiles and sets down the folder, clasping his hands together. I can see that you're hesitant to trust me, he begins, carefully choosing his words. But all I want is what's best for you. I want to help you, Sparrow. His tone is earnest as he speaks. You grit your teeth, crossing your arms and furrowing your brows to, uh, to try to seem intimidating. How can I trust you? I don't even know who you are. I come here expecting my usual counselor, and then you show up. Lead me into, what is this, a parking garage? It's my office, he corrects you. Yeah, your office. That's under the building and surrounded by concrete walls. 
I told you, they didn't give me much of a budget, he mumbles. I have a feeling they didn't give you no budget. <laughs> you just broke in here and pretended to be a counselor, right? Whatever this place is, you bring me in here and lock the door like a maniac. Morgan frowns a little bit, playing with the edge of the paper on the clipboard. Looks like he has nothing to say to that. What's even on that file you have? You ask, reaching out. Morgan pulls the file away, holding it out of reach. It's your information. I'm your counselor now, so... Okay. We gonna save this part here? Um, accept Morgan as your counselor. Refuses help. We already, like, punched him. We're just gonna keep with this route. Like the hell you are! Give me it! You stand up and try to grab the file again. You catch the edge of the file, pulling it towards you. The contents come loose and spill onto the table. Pictures of you scatter on the table. They're all small pol Polaroids, each labeled with a date and description of the of your face or expression you are making. What? What? What the hell? What the hell is all this? You say, picking one up. You look up at Morgan, who's staring impassively at you. The glint in his eyes have vanished. Oh no. Pictures of you, obviously. Ah, but don't touch them so carelessly, he adds, reaching into his pocket. You pull back, fearfully, dropping the photo. Morgan simply takes out a pair of gloves, slipping them on. He picks up the photos carefully, organizing them and placing them back into the file. Once they are back where they belong, Morgan sighed, running a gloved hand through his hair. Ugh, my head hurts, he groans quietly. He looks tired. You could probably knock him out this time. Looks like I'll have to go to plan B, he says, reaching under his seat. P plan B? Your chest tightens with anxiety as you back away from the table. Yep. Honestly, we could have done this the easy way, but... <laughs> what a shame. Um, Why'd you put on a mask? Morgan walks around the edge of the table, fastening a mask to his face. A cloth hangs out of his pocket. Now then, hold still, will you? He says, taking the cloth in one hand before lunging for you. Like hell, we're gonna sit still! He's on top of you in an instant, your hand gripping his w wrist, keeping the cloth away from your face. A slightly sweet smell wafers towards you. You can't re read Morgan's expression, but his eyes darken at your resistance. He wasn't expecting you to struggle this much. Managing to push him off, you crawl towards the door and try to get away from Morgan. A hand grips your ankle, yanking you backwards. Let me go, you shriek, kicking him in the face as hard as you can. Morgan lets out a grunt when you kick him square in the face, his grip on your ankle loosening. You quickly pull away and stand up. Not wasting this chance, you tackle him to the floor, grabbing the cloth and you shove it under his mask. Yes! Yes! He shoves you off of him, standing up and ripping the mask off. <laughs> Look how bruised he looks now. <laughs> Morgan seems dazed as he staggers, holding himself up at the table. Whatever he put on his face earlier wore off, exposing his injuries. Ugh, that seriously hurt, he mumbles before collapsing. Hopefully for good this time. You approach him, checking to make sure he was actually knocked out this time. Morgan was definitely knocked out. Grabbing his keys, you find the key with the blue rhinestones and unlock the door. Well, at least he's telling the truth about the key. You run out, finding the exit as fast as you could. You run past the receptionist who gives you a questioning look as you leave. Quickly spotting your car, you unlock and jump in, making sure to lock the door. Turning the engine on, you grip the steering wheel tightly as you sped out of the parking lot and away from the office. Ending three, escape counseling. Okay, wow, that got intense. But hey, we got two out of four endings. Uh, ending one and ending three, so now we need to go for ending two and ending four, right? Oh, wow, but hey, we escaped both times so far. Um, so we might not escape the next two times. But hey, we painted his face a pretty shade of purple. <laughs> You know, not that I'm biased or nothing, but purple rocks. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's try again. Um. Let's 
Let's see what happens if we picked accept him okay so we've already uh punched wait no we didn't punch him but we tried to escape this time uh let's accept accept morgan as our new counselor you sigh letting your arms fall to the sides you're too tar tired to argue anymore you know what sure you're my counselor for the day morgan's face immediately lights up at your words his smile returning. I'm glad you accepted me. That makes me really happy, Sparrow. Oh, we even get, like, happy music. Did he have to say it in such a creepy way? Morgan clears his throat, his gaze suddenly serious despite his smile. Well, let's begin, shall we? He says, leaning forward a little. What's been bothering you, Sparrow? You gulp. You still felt a little hesitant to tell the stranger your problems. It's taken you a while to truly open up to your usual counselor as well. Hopefully Morgan wouldn't be too upset if you ended up claiming up. Uh, well... Sorry, water break. A sigh escapes you as you lean back into your chair. You explain the surface issues of your anxiety. Morgan had listened inten intently, occasionally jotting down notes and offering surprisingly insightful advice every now and then. He was truly kind and understanding. It was like he knew you for a long time. Actually, now that you think about it, had you seen him somewhere before? Uh, um, Dr. Morgan, you begin, but his mumbling cuts you off. I see, so that's how it is. He... He murmurs, his eyes scanning the notes he took. You shift uncomfortably in your seat as he took a moment to read over his papers. Even though he was caring and helpful, this was as much as you were willing to tell him for now. I feel like there's still some things that you're keeping from me, but... But... but your hands nervously play with the hem of your clothes as he speaks. Looks like our time is up, he says, standing up. Huh? What, did you want to talk more? His voice is playful as he pushes the chair in. N no, th that's not what I meant. I, You stumble over your words as he walks over, holding a hand out to you. You take his hand and Morgan helps you up, his hand ghosting over your lower back as he walks you out of the room. I'm your counselor, remember? He reminds you as he guides you up the st up the stairs. Okay, so apparently we did go downstairs. Um, I either forgot it or it they didn't mention it at first. But okay, that explains a lot now. And down the hallways, I'm always here if you need to talk. Right? Yeah, I I guess you are. You mumble. The carpet pattern suddenly more interested than looking at Morgan's face. Wait, does that mean I'll be seeing you again? You could feel Morgan's eyes on you, his laugh echoing down the hall as the two of you walked. Of course. A silence fall on the two of you, the gears in your head turning. You had a lot of questions. However, when you opened your mouth to ask about something, Morgan had opened the door to the reception area. You look back at him and he simply smiles. See you soon, Sparrow. Y yeah. See you soon, Dr. Morgan. You set up a follow-up session with a rep receptionist before leaving. As you walk to your car, you can feel eyes boring into the back of your head. You can't shake the feeling of being watched as you unlock your car and get in. Goosebumps rise along the nape of your neck as you, as you get settled in your car. Paranoia gets the better of you and you check the back seats, just in case. Nothing's there. Of course there's nothing there. You start the engine and begin to drive out of the parking lot. As you pass by the entrance of the office, you spot Morgan smiling at you in the window. He wa waves as he watches you leave. You quickly look away, focusing on driving. The grip on the dr driving wheel makes your knuckles pale. That wasn't so bad, I guess, but I never got the chance to ask what happened to my usual counselor.
What? What? We were driving away. Oh, that's what happened to the counselor? Hmm? Oh, I forgot about you. Looks like you're finally awake. I briefly considered removing the gag from the counselor's mouth before, I back, before backing away. It's truly a shame I don't carry your office keys with you, good sir. I had to bring Sparrow to this dingy parking garage that I set up last minute. Oh well. Kneeling down in front of the counselor, I tied the plastic bag I held over his head. Oh. We're from Morgan's point of view right now. Oh ho ho. Well then, it should take a while for you to suffocate to death. Why don't I go over what I learned today while we wait? Taking a seat in the metal chair, I flipped through the notes I took during the counseling session. Uh, Sparrow, I can't wait to see you again. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's what happened to our other counselor. Oh no. Ending two. Seeing you next. See you next time. Okay, um, so we got ending one, two, and three. We gotta go after four now. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. I feel sorry for the other counselor. <laughs> oh, no. He's killing him as we leave. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. One ending to go, guys. One ending. One ending, one ending. Okay, so we finished this one. Okay. Stay still or punch his lights out. Okay, we did that punch his lights out last time, so we're going to stay still. Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table, seating you in an uncomfortable metal chair. He sits across from you, a small cl uh, clipboard and a file set on his side of the table. You nervously stare at him as he organizes the table. Morgan notices your stare and he blushes a little before coughing and grabbing a file. So, anxiety, huh? Okay, we've read this. You grit your teeth, crossing your arms and fearing your brows to try to see and seem intimidating. How can I trust you? I don't even know who you are. Okay, we have... Okay. We had read that before, that's why I skipped through it. Except Morgan as your new counselor refuses help. Okay, we did do accept already. Let's refuse his help. Wait, I'm confused now. Like hell you are. Give me it. You. Okay, so let's see. Oh! Hang on, hang on. It started off the same, but it changed. Look. Morgan lets out a grunt when you kick him, but his grip remains tight as he drops his full weight on your back, pinning you down. Shh, he whispers, pressing the cloth to your nose and mouth. You try to hold your breath, thrashing and struggling to get off of Get him off of you, but it's futile. Eventually, it feels like your lungs will burst. You inhale the sweet scent on the cloth, feeling a slight headache and dizziness as he as sleep overtakes you. Ending four. You need more counseling. <laughs> oh, I like how it just like ends there. Like, oh yeah, you need more counseling. You need to um spend more time with him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad we got all four endings and um, saw everything that could have happened. This was a nice little game. Um, it was short, which is totally fine. It had awesome different endings. And I think ending two was my favorite because 
it showed like um the counselor afterwards and more of an insight into Morgan. <laughs> You're not a doctor, sir. <laughs> But, um, I am going to be playing the prequel to this, so look for it up in a couple of days. Um, it is going to be called Lucky Day, I do believe. So, definitely go check that out, and we can see what, I'm pretty sure we're going to be following Morgan, right? I mean, we can see what the heck got Morgan to this point of pretending to be a counselor, I guess. But, if you like it, leave a like down below, so I know you like our crazy Yandere boy. And, I will see you in the next one. Bye.